A man named Lincoln wakes up from a bad dream where he is riding a boat with a woman. Suddenly, he is pulled into the sea to drown. Upon waking up, Lincoln immediately goes into his wardrobe full of all white uniforms to dress up, but he notices that his shoes are missing a pair, making him complain to the monitor. After suiting up, he heads straight to the elevator along with the other similarly dressed people. While inside the elevator, a hologram about the lottery is shown. The winner is a man named Starkweather, who is very happy that he won. The lottery's reward is a permanent trip to a place known as the island. In this post apocalyptic world where there is contamination everywhere, the island is the only contamination free haven left in the world. Lincoln and other people inside the facility are survivors of this apocalyptic event. Because the island is a nice place to go, one of the people near Lincoln, Gandu, has a brief violent outburst because he has been waiting to win it for seven years. Due to this outburst, guards immediately head to the elevator to calm Gandu down. Afterward, Lincoln heads to the cafeteria to eat breakfast. There, he is told by the lunch lady that he is not allowed bacon and other delicious food because he needs to maintain a nutritional diet. He is instead given gooey vegetable food, which he dislikes. His friend Jordan shows him how to manipulate the lunch lady. After flattering the lunch lady, she is rewarded with some pieces of bacon and she secretly hands them to Lincoln. After eating, Lincoln is summoned to the office of Dr. Merrick, the head of the institute. There, the doctor asks him about the change in his diet and the bad dream, and he replies that it is a dream about a particular futuristic boat. He then begins to ask questions such as the unusual food assignments and the weird all white uniform that everyone has. Because of this, Merrick plants some nanotech bugs on his eyes so that he can monitor Lincoln's health for 24 hours. After talking to Merrick, Lincoln proceeds to his job of pouring liquids into long tubes. While doing this, he asks his friend Jones if he's also getting bored doing this repetitive job. Jones instead tells him that the lottery is rigged and that he might be the next one to win. However, Gandu can't even listen to what Jones says. Suddenly, a woman named Lima falls down while carrying a batch of vials. It turns out that she is pregnant and that she is finally giving birth, which means a sure ticket to the island. This is because, in this current setting, someone can go to the island if someone wins the lottery or if they have given birth. For this reason, the other people clap for her except for Jones, who thinks it's unfair. As usual, Lincoln takes his chance to mess with the computer so that he can skip work again. He then reports it to the supervisor so that he will be given permission to go to the technician. In actuality, he just wants to talk with a guy he knows from another part of the facility named McCord. McCord works as a technician who gives Lincoln free liquor and answers his questions as long as he can. After briefly talking to him, McCord is called to a different area. Before leaving, he tells Lincoln not to reveal what they are talking about during these short meetings. After McCord leaves, Lincoln notices a moth nearby, which he finds strange because there should be no life outside the facility if everything is contaminated. He then places the insect inside a small box that he found on McCord's table and returns immediately to his room to gaze at it. Meanwhile, McCord quickly heads to the medical facility where he is summoned. There, he goes inside a room to fix a computer. While he is fixing it, a group of doctors transfers a giant round sack that contains a person. Although McCord tells them not to open the sack, while he is there, he witnesses it anyway as the doctors extract the grown man out of his sack. Strangely, the grown man inside acts like a newborn baby. It turns out that there are more of these people inside sacks. Also, their food comes from the tubes, which Lincoln and others diligently fill every day. Meanwhile, Lincoln and Jordan have a virtual fight against each other. Although they seem to be evenly matched, Jordan defeats him. After the quick virtual battle, the two head to a bar where he secretly tells her about the moth he found. This surprises Jordan because they should be extinct. He then tells her that he has a bad feeling about everything in the facility, but Jordan is optimistic that there is nothing wrong. Just then, the lottery winner is announced, which turns out to be Jordan. Although Lincoln is happy for her, he is also sad because he thinks they will never see each other again. That night, Lincoln cannot sleep due to having nightmares about drowning again. He then looks at the trapped moth beside him. 
While everyone is sleeping, Lincoln goes out of his room and quietly heads to where he found the moth. There, he climbs the ladder that leads to an opening underneath the medical facility. After climbing, he finds a nurse's uniform to blend among the staff. While he is there, he witnesses Lima giving birth to a healthy baby. However, he also sees the doctors killing her immediately, which horrifies Lincoln. It turns out that Lima is just a surrogate clone mother and that her baby is given to the real Lima. Later on, he also witnesses the lottery winner Starkweather attempt to escape the facility. He watches the lottery winner helplessly plead for his life while he is dragged back to the operations room to harvest his organs. A guard eventually sees Lincoln on the ground, but because he is wearing a nurse's uniform, the guard mistakes him for one of the staff and helps him stand up instead. Lincoln then hurriedly returns to where he came from. Afterward, the guards watch the footage of Starkweather's earlier escape attempt. They laugh at his attempt and the guards that he hit along the way. Merrick shows up and reprimands the guards for laughing. He then notices something in the footage and asks them to rewind to a certain frame. There, he sees Lincoln, who he quickly identifies due to his clone's wristband. As such, Merrick orders his immediate arrest. Meanwhile, Lincoln goes straight to Jordan's room and quickly pulls her away. While running away, he tells Jordan that he saw Lima and Starkweather's death and that the island is a lie. At this point, the institution announces that Lincoln has been contaminated. Soldiers then begin to fire at the two fleeing the scene. After running for a few minutes while evading the soldiers, the two eventually reach a room full of clones that are being forced to watch clips of memories. Without wasting more time to know about these memories, the two run off again until they reach a bridge toward the beautiful outside world. However, this outside world turns out to be a holographic image. Upon running further, they finally reach the true outside world and find out that they are actually inside an underground facility all this time. The two's escape is a ginormous concern for Merrick. After briefing some rich and elite clients about his program, wherein he claims that they are only producing organs for the clients, Merrick then employs a bounty hunter by the name of Laurent. He reveals to Laurent that they are actually secretly making clones because they cannot form organs properly without any experience of life. As such, the Institute has to turn them into humans first with life experiences so they can harvest their organs. To control the clones, the Institute has the idea of the island which gives purpose to the clones. He then instructs Laurent to catch Lincoln and Jordan immediately without anyone knowing, especially Jordan because her real-life counterpart is dying within 48 hours. Meanwhile, Lincoln and Jordan take a rest in nearby ruins after running for a long time. The following day, the two hear a motorcycle passing by with Lincoln saying that he wants one. He then takes out the box that he took from McCord's table and realizes that what is written there indicates a nearby place. They then go to that place, which is a bar. Inside, Lincoln asks the bartender about his friend's whereabouts, and the bartender replies that he is in the bathroom. He then leaves Jordan behind with some men. Inside the bathroom, he angrily asks the semi-naked McCord about what he knows. McCord then tells him to go with him to his house so that he can explain the whole situation. After taking Jordan away, the three of them head to McCord's house. There, McCord reveals the ugly truth that the two are just clones meant for future harvest. He explains to them that the clients do not know about Merrick's operation because it is illegal and unethical to produce clones. As such, Lincoln replies that they need to go to their real-life counterparts to expose the truth. Although hesitant at first, McCord decides to help them in their dangerous quest by providing them with clothes. He then gives them his credit card and a little cash money before driving them to a train station that will lead them to California. While there, McCord gets them some tickets as well as a map of California. However, while getting the map, he notices immediately that they are already surrounded by Merrick's hired men, so he tells the two to run. As a result, McCord gets shot in the chest and he falls from the second floor and dies. Seeing this, they run to escape their pursuers. They then lock themselves inside a room where they see a nail gun. One of the pursuers tries to unlock the door and Jordan retaliates by firing nails at his hands. Then, they quickly leave the room and head straight to the train that is departing. While the train is moving, 
Lawrence men identify McCord as an employee of the Institute. Lawrence then instructs them to head to the city to corner Lincoln and Jordan. The two eventually reach the city, where Jordan is in awe upon seeing herself in an advertisement where she is a clothing model. They then ask around about the information directory to know their counterparts' locations. The two are eventually identified through the camera system. They are also accurately tracked when they use McCord's credit card to look for information. As such, Laurent and his men quickly move to catch them. However, the police also independently arrive at the scene to arrest the two, due to the use of McCord's credit card making them prime suspects. Laurent cannot do anything but let the police arrest them because interfering will lead to the exposure of his secret mission. While inside the police mobile, Lincoln asks for Tom Lincoln's information, his real-life counterpart. Meanwhile, Laurent reports to Merrick about the situation involving the police. Because Merrick cannot let the police know about the clones, he allows them to use any force necessary to catch them. As such, the police mobile where Lincoln and Jordan are being held is suddenly hit fast by an armored truck. Miraculously surviving the incident, they immediately escape the wreckage. A gunfight then erupts between Lawrence men and the police, while Lincoln and Jordan run for their lives once again. After running for a while, they hop on the back of a moving truck. Because they cannot fit inside, they remove the heavy and large weights that the truck is carrying. The gigantic weights then fall down on the road, hitting the cars of both Lawrence men and the police. Because chasing them via cars has been unsuccessful so far, Laurent then deploys the use of flying motorcycles to catch them. But Lincoln manages to defeat a rider of the flying motorcycle. He then steals the vehicle and flies off with Jordan through the city, prompting the enemies to chase them. They eventually crash on a logo of building. While attempting to get away from there, two of Laurent's men open fire on them from inside the building, causing the two to hide in the logo. The logo eventually falls down while carrying the two but they luckily get off before it hits the ground, managing to land instead on some nearby safety nets. Meanwhile, inside the Institute, Gandu is killed by Merrick for questioning the truth about the contamination. Later on, Merrick is informed by a scientist about Lincoln's brain. There, they find out that his memories are different from the rest of the clones. Here, Merrick concludes that the memories are actually from the client. Back to Lincoln and Jordan, they hide inside what appears to be a parking lot where they wait for the rain to stop. Lincoln tells her that he memorized Tom Lincoln's address and that they will go there tomorrow. They then share an embrace to combat the cold weather. The following day, they head to Tom's house. Because they share the same body, Lincoln manages to bypass the house's security measures. While inside the modern house, Tom sees the two strangers and immediately attacks Lincoln. However, he stops when he realizes that they look the same and Lincoln introduces himself as his clone. Tom then talks to Jordan while his clone changes clothes, and he is pretty much enamored by Jordan's beauty. After Lincoln suits up, Tom talks to his clone, although he gets quickly annoyed by the clone's imitation of his different accent. He tells his clone that his liver will die after two years due to too much pleasuring with other people. He then finds out that Lincoln has not made love in his life, which surprises him. Lincoln then asks for his help to expose the institution's unethical practice. Tom agrees and goes to his room to prepare. However, Tom secretly betrays them by informing the institution about the clones. He then returns and flashes a smile toward Jordan. But Jordan knows Lincoln too much that she can tell if he is lying and she sees this similar tendency in Tom. As such, she whispers to him that Tom is lying about helping them. Because of this, he tells Tom that Jordan will stay in the house. Despite not knowing the reason, Tom accepts this. In the garage, Lincoln insists that he will drive because he knows how to do it, and Tom accepts again even though he doubts it. While driving, Lincoln does not know that the red on traffic lights means stop, making Tom shout at him to stop. After they stop, Lawrence men suddenly arrive via helicopter. Tom then points his pistol at Lincoln's head. Lincoln then drives again, but at full speed. They are then chased by Lawrence men who shoot their car. Eventually, they reach an abandoned warehouse where the identical two fight against each other. Lawrence and his men soon arrive, although they are confused by what is happening. Tom manages to get the upper hand and continues pointing the gun at his clone's head. He then tells Lawrence not to kill Lincoln because he still needs his organs. However, Lincoln smartly mimics Tom, which confuses Lawrence. 
After going back and forth as to who is actually real, Lincoln then attaches his clone's wristband to his counterpart. Because of this, Laurent shoots Tom and kills him. Oblivious that this is not the real Tom, Laurent asks Lincoln if the news about this will spread, and he replies that he will keep it secret. He then returns to Tom's house, where Jordan points her gun at him. However, Jordan sees in his eyes and knows that he is Lincoln. They then passionately kiss, which leads to a night of pleasure. Meanwhile, Merrick discovers that Lincoln and other clones from his generation are all embedded with the trait of curiosity, making them question everything. For this reason, Merrick orders a complete recall, which means that all clones will be eliminated and changed anew. To eliminate as many clones as possible, Merrick increases the lottery winners per day that will head to the island. The following day, Lincoln receives news about the planned recall. He will then be delivered to the Institute for further explanation. Because of this, he and Jordan devise a rescue plan for the clones in the institution, as well as a subsequent plan of sailing away together in a boat. The plan involves Lincoln and Jordan separating, with Lincoln taking a helicopter ride to the institution and Jordan getting herself arrested. After getting to the place, Lincoln quickly attacks the staff sent to welcome him, and Jordan escapes from the operations room. Later, they reunite with each other inside the institution, but they soon have to separate again due to their different missions. Lincoln will destroy the holographic image of the outside world, while Jordan will save Jones and other clones from being terminated. Meanwhile, Laurent is lauded by Merrick for successfully catching Jordan. However, Laurent begins to question Merrick's method because he thinks he wants to be a god. Later on, Merrick finds out from a doctor that Tom is the one killed and not the clone, forcing Merrick to take matters into his own hands. Jordan accidentally stumbles upon Laurent, but instead of harming her, Laurent decides to help her in her cause. As such, they manage to save Jones and other clones from being exterminated. Meanwhile, Merrick attacks Lincoln with a harpoon gun while he is messing with the institution's generators that maintain the holographic images. A battle then ensues between them. While they are fighting, the generators begin to explode. As Merrick chokes the life out of Lincoln, the clone reaches for the harpoon gun beside him and shoots Merrick's neck. Lincoln then proceeds to choke him with the wire attached to the harpoon while everything collapses around them. As a result, Merrick gets hanged by the harpoon stuck in his neck and dies. Lincoln, meanwhile, holds onto the wires connected to the harpoon. Due to the collapse, the light from the real world shines upon the underground base, causing the clones to immediately run outside. Thousands in their numbers, the clones finally see the real world for the first time in their lives. Amongst them, Lincoln and Jordan reunite with a kiss while Lawrence is happy that he has helped in liberating the clones. After helping the clones escape, Lincoln and Jordan finally sail off in a boat, just as they had planned. I think the movie is brilliant in all of its elements, such as the plot, the props, the characters, and the sounds used. What I find even more compelling about this movie is that it shows an ethical dilemma about the use of clones to save lives because clones are already living beings. Not only that, but the movie also shows that if such technological advancement is indeed available, it will ultimately be available only to the rich and the elites who will monopolize its usage. Overall, the movie tickles the mind in such a good way, making it replayable.